just got this in. So this is the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle. Now this is Emacs's bind and fly outdoor geared micro FPV drone optimized for doing acro and long flight times. Now today we're going to be taking a look at it. We're going to be going over flight performance, a, a build overview, batteries, modifications, and more. One of the things about Emacs drones that consistently impresses me are the flight characteristics that they come with straight out of the box. Now Emacs has team pilots and developers that actually test fly. They don't just take a model, throw the default settings on it, close their eyes, and hope that it flies well. Sadly, that particular scenario happens far too often, almost quite literally, which ends up forcing the community and reviewers to tune the drone to even get it flying reasonably well. As a result of Emax's work, the Tiny Hawk Freestyle stock flight tune on Betaflight 4.04 has been excellent to me. Everything felt smooth, there were no vibrations or shakes, the handling to complete tricky moves like inverted yaw spins was solid and not sloppy at all. It lives up to its name, you know, the older Tiny Hawks, they could do some acro, but they were limited by their weight and their size and the ducts. Now, this is truly a freestyle beast capable of nearly any move that you want to pull off in a small package like this. Now, besides the flight performance handling, I, I really like how quiet this drone is in flight. I don't think this gets mentioned enough. If you are in a park area and you want to keep a low profile and not make a lot of noise, the propeller and motor combo on this drone uh, combined with the smooth tune really makes it almost stealthy. Although I rarely fly at times when there are any people at a field or park anyway, I still appreciate having it. Now the Freestyle sports a carbon fiber frame and you can get a nice up close look at that here. It's equipped with an all-in-one F4 flight controller on board with a 5 amp ESC and we've got 1103 7000 kV motors and there's one of the little motors there. Now for the props, they are the Emacs brand Avon 2.5 inch tri blade propellers and all the parts on this build that you see here are readily available for the North American region if anything breaks or needs to be replaced. One thing that I love is that with this build they did top mounted batteries. So this is how the batteries go in there. It's powered by two one cell 450 milliamp hour batteries and these come in the box. And that's pretty much how they sit. They just sit on top and they strap in and plug in. Now the weight of the drone itself is 46 grams and it's around 79, 80 grams with these two batteries up here, the Emacs brand batteries. Now the camera is a 600 TV line CMOS camera and it's not great but not terrible either. Uh, you need to watch for the thin branches or objects with this camera. It does not have great detail to be able to see some of them. Um, on more than one occasion they bit me. Now the camera has two angling options. You can see this is one of the little notches that it's placed in. By default there's a second notch that you can move the camera into. You will need to unscrew the top base plate in order to do any camera angle adjustments. Now I kept the default camera position and I was fine with that. Okay, so the Tiny Hawk Freestyle is powered by two of the JST PH 2.0 connectors, but this time they are solid pins and you can see the difference in the pins. There's the, look, they're all solid all the way through and let's compare that to the regular Tiny Hawk version one that I also have here. You can see that there's little lines going through there that indicates that they're not the solid pins. The freestyle being all solid metal is great. By doing this, they drastically decreased uh, the resistance and the connectors themselves are also more robust. You can draw more current uh, and also the mating cycles will be longer. So good on Emacs for using a solid pin connector and it's really pretty well built. Um, I, I like this, I like what they've done here. Speaking of the ESC, while we're on the subject, this build has no buzzer. The only audible beep that it has is from the ESC slash all-in-one flight controller here, but it's not very loud. 
This can be very easy to lose out there, and a few times I, I panicked that I had lost it entirely. Luckily, I did have DVR playback of the flights in my goggles so that I could locate it, and I always recommend DVRing every flight for any drone that you have, especially with micros like this. So the antenna here for the video transmitter is mounted really close to the props and it's held into the frame by this zip tie here. You may need to adjust this zip tie or push it back to get it decently away from the props. But here is a tip that Andy RC discovered. I'm going to mention it here. Just thread it through this little strap. You can just take it and thread it right through. It also has the added benefit of keeping it up straight. I unfortunately tore the little tip out of my antenna, not even in a crash, just by accident. I did it while I was pulling it through the strap. And now I'm going to have to fix it by cutting some back of the material to, uh, you know, expose what's left and then reheat shrink it and all that. So if you're going to do that, just be careful. Now, which that actually reminds me, if you ever need to replace this whole antenna for whatever reason, the only option that you have is to re-solder on a new one because the video transmitter, surprise, surprise, it's soldered on there. There's no connector. Now, I have not screwed on my Emacs Avon Triblade propellers here. In my opinion, you don't really have to. Never once did a prop come off in any of my crashes, and if they get nicked or dinged up, it's a lot quicker to replace them by not having to deal with the screws out in the field. Screws are provided in the box, though, if you want to secure them down. Now, my last complaint about the Freestyles build is a minor but a valid one. The propellers prevent this build from fitting into the included carrying case with the foam. It's, it's just not going to happen. It fits just fine without it once it's removed, as you can see. If they make a Tiny Hawk Freestyle version 2, I really hope that they consider it next time. Batteries. Which ones to get? I tried three different batteries with the same capacity rating, and all of them perform pretty well. The Freestyle gives a pretty long flight time, depending on your flight style, on 450 mAh. Now, the Emacs 450s and the GMB 450s were both really good high voltage batteries. No problems with them, and they hit the marks for that flight time. But my favorite? The UR UAV 450 mAh batteries, only because of the incredible value. You could buy a whole bunch of these in a 10 pack and just be set for $2.80 per battery. I mean, these are cheap, 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 but they are not bad. They perform really well. That's what I did, and I've been happy with that. Now, you could also explore batteries in the 550 to 520 milliampere hour category as well, if you just want a little more capacity. If you're coming from the Tiny Hawk version 1, all the batteries that you buy for it, you can use them on your Tiny Hawk version 1, or your Mobula 7, or any other little one cell drone as well. Now, let's say you decide to change the battery connector to an XT30. In that case, GNB also makes these 450 milliampere hour two cell batteries, and I've used these batteries on other quads, and they did not fail to impress me. The onboard video transmitter here is 25 milliwatts, and it isn't necessary to unlock it unless your favorite band and channel is on one of the lock frequencies. So if you want to unlock it, to do that, you hold down this button here on top, and you plug in a battery. Once you do that, you can then set the band and the channel from the on-screen display menu options since the Freestyle supports smart audio. You can also do it within Betaflight using the video transmitter commands, which I find to be easier. So generally in my experience with Emacs products, the performance of the video transmission modules they use has been C minus grade. I've complained about this with the original Tiny Hawk version 1, and so I was genuinely worried about how usable the freestyles would be. The question I had was, can you sit down at a local park or private property and just fly within around 400 to 600 feet of range with minor obstructions? And the answer is yes. And I think that's what they were going for. 
Now, this is one of the better video transmission modules from them, but not by much. I know we're talking, we went from like a C minus on the Tiny Hawk, maybe a, maybe a high D on the Tiny Hawk version one, to a C plus. Now, of course, that means it's still only good enough just to get by, which, you know, depends on your situation. You know, can you fly around trees and objects? Yes, cautiously. Within that range that I specified, you'll mostly be fine. But if you push it too hard, you're going to have degraded signal. And remember, this is still only 25 milliwatts. Overall, I wish that Emacs would have just provided us with a better option out of the box. I think buyers would have been willing to pay a little bit more for it. Which does remind me, I recently became aware of the fact that your patch antenna may not be optimal for your linear antenna drones, such as the Freestyle, such as the Tiny Hog version 1. I purchased one of the Menace RC Bandicoot antennas, which is an optimized patch for linear ones. Now, you shouldn't really have to purchase another patch to compensate for it. And all the video in this review was taken with a regular patch, which is what I feel like most of you will probably fly with. I've tested this antenna briefly since I got it, and it definitely feels like it makes a difference. So if you're like me and you have lots of drones with linear antennas, I would look into getting this. We're all starting to run a lot more of these dipole antennas, especially as the toothpick builds and the whoops have just become more and more popular. So having a specific antenna for that occasion, it's only 10 bucks, it may really be worth the investment. In the end, if you are not happy with the video transmitter, you can upgrade it. So we're going to open the hood real quick. So we've got the four screws off with our 1.5 millimeter hex screwdriver, and now we can take the top off and access the video transmitter. But let me show you the two options that I think are best to upgrade this with. And we're not going to do the upgrade, I'm just going to talk about it. We've got the Esheen Nano VTX, and we've got the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano. So the stock video transmitter located here actually runs off of 3.3 volts, and you, you can see that right there. This is a low power usage uh, module. Again, it's only 25 milliwatts. For many of these micro video transmitters, you'll need to use a 5 volt pad on the board. I would highly discourage running at any of the highest levels if you decide to tap the 5 volt from the flight controller for any video transmitter that you use. You will risk burning up the board. Now, unfortunately, with the Ishii Nano video transmitter, the only option is to wire it in with 5 volt. It doesn't have a wide range of input. There is an alternative, and that's the TBS Unify Pro Nano 32. The TBS is the only nano size video transmitter that I found that has a wide range of input voltage so that you can power it directly from the battery input here. It is the safest way to upgrade it and utilize the full capabilities of the video transmitter up to 400 milliwatts. I regret to say that the downside of it is the cost. 30 to $35 shipped is what the TBS Unify Pro uh, 32 Nano is going to run you. And that's a lot of money, especially considering the Esheen one is only 13 to 15 bucks. Uh, you're going to have to decide if it's worth it when you know, you've already paid around $100 for the drone. In any case, if you choose to take the risk and run it off of the 5 volt, I would not run either of these video transmitters at their highest power level. You know, don't go any more than say 100 milliwatts. And I say that as someone who's not even tried it yet. So again, do that at your own risk. If you're asking me what I'm going to go with at some point, it will be the TBS Unify Pro 32 because I've already purchased it. 
While we're talking about nano video transmitters, you might also want to look into the Emacs nano antenna. That might be a really great option to replace the dipole that it comes with. Look, this is really nice small antenna and with a new VTX it should fit on and go comfortably right out the back. So yeah, I would I would definitely look into one of these. Okay, so let's briefly go over the Betaflight setup. So the Betaflight version is 4.04 .04 and the board is a Maytech F411 with a built-in FreeSky receiver. Now in the ports page we can see that there is a spare UART and that would be good for installing an external receiver if you wanted to and then you would just tap this button to indicate that it is a serial receiver port. So yeah, you could do that. That's what that's for. Under the configuration, everything is pretty much left alone except just a couple things. So the arming angle, I changed this from 50 to 180 and the reason for that is because I wanted to be able to be able to start the motors if the drone was caught in a weird situation, uh, like such as in a tree or on top of something. There were definitely a few situations where I almost got it stuck and you want to be able to arm it at any angle. It can really help you break free from where you are. Now, the other thing I've done is I turn on RX lost. That's so it beeps if it loses connection with the transmitter. Uh, again, that's coming from the uh, D-Shot beacon or the ESC. Remember this doesn't have an actual buzzer. Uh, under the power and battery, I left this alone. Their settings seem to be perfectly fine. This, these are the PIDs, and by default, it's set to rate profile two. You can get a just quick look at the PIDs here. Uh, the angle limit is 25. You might want to increase that if you're an experienced flyer, and you intend to fly this thing in angle mode. Um, also, it's got the do rate profiles, as well as rate profile one, as rate profile two, so you can see the difference between those two. Again, a little higher rates on rate profile two. Um, under the receiver tab, we're all good here. It should be T A E R one two three four for Free Sky. Um, in the RSSI channel, you keep that disabled because that's coming from the uh, built-in receiver. It's already all, all taken care of for you. In the modes page, I've set up you know all the standard modes: arm, angle, horizon. And the beeper as well. Again, this will just tap right into the D-Shot beacon. So you can have it on a switch if you want to do that. Now, I've enabled turtle mode, uh, which will allow you to flip it over after you crash. I really don't recommend you using it. It's just there. Again, if you get it in a bad situation, you have no, no, no other option. Because the ESC is so low amperage, a flip over in the grass, especially if it gets stuck, you could just blow the board. So just keep it there as a last resort if you've got no other option. As for the OSD, I pretty much just sort of took a few things off of here and I, I kept it simple. But yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's the whole beta flight setup. All right, so that's it. I hope that this review for the Tiny Hawk Freestyle helped you out. Uh, please leave me a like if it did. I'd love to hear from you. You know, how is your Tiny Hawk Freestyle doing? Are you happy with it as it is? Did you upgrade it? You know, any tips? Tell me. I want to know because I like this drone. I went ahead and I bought a replacement body for it. I've got all these batteries for it. Even though I did receive it free for review, it's one that I felt was really, really worth keeping and investing money into. And I'm going to keep flying it. So as always, have a great day, guys. And uh, I'm going to go do some flying.